Ben, thanks for joining us on the convo. Thank you for having me. It's yeah, we meet to. again. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I think that was at your listening party. Exactly. So, how has the come up been? How, um, how did you get introduced into music? Well, I think I pretty much it was just when I got born again. I went to church with my friends and. They just asked me to sing. Yes. I was not planning to be a singer or anything, but the pastor saw, saw us that day, like five of us, and was like, okay, you, you are going to sing, you, you are going to share something, you study it. And then it's only one song that I that I, I, I was listening to by Maurice Chapman and the Maranatha singers. So that was the only song I could think of that minute. And the moment I started singing, everybody was the whole hall was a gog like people were screaming wow i was like i was literally shaking like this because i never it was not my you plan. didn't anticipate it. yeah it was never my plan to do music or be a music minister i was just learning the songs for my personal devotion and that's how that's how i, I got it <laughs> <laughs> you know normally some people say they began from the church choir and exactly. all that so you, you are never in the church choir no no this thing i'm telling you was the was the was the uh teenagers church teenagers church so after that day the pastor just kind of like okay um those of you who can sing we need to have a choir so yeah. those of you who can sing put yourself together, we need to have a choir for the teenagers church. So that's how I joined the choir. And everything began from that whole experience. We, we got instructors, the pastor got, got us, the church got us instructors, uh, music instructors and everything to put us through. So that's how it began for me. At, at what point did you say, oh, I'll take this as a career, as a profession? Okay, I got, um, just, you know, because I was always in the choir for programs in the church, um, I had the privilege of being part of many, many, many seminars that the church was having on purpose, on prosperity, on things like that. On the, You know, so one of those seminars was centered around Purpose, purpose in life, you know. So by the end of those that convention, I was it became clear to me that this was not just my hobby or what I just enjoyed doing. This calling? was this was God's plan for my life. How I dabbled into it, how I discovered it, all now began to make sense. And I said, Wow, you know, and then from my relationship with God, it was easy to now really know the mind of God that this was more than a hobby, this was an assignment. <laughs> <laughs> Can you remember the first um, track you put out professional? Ah, the first track I put out? <laughs> Man, I, before I came out like a solo art, act, I was when a group, me and my friend, we were called E Double. You know, you know, E Double. Yes. What does it stand for? 
our initials, my okay. E, his own E, and then instead of double E, we called it E, e double. double. So, <laughs> so we, we did a recording. Took us a long time, a lot of sweat and tears and blood. And that one came out and it didn't do so good. You know, it didn't do so good, but it helped me to see that I was not, it was, God's plan was not a collaborate like a, a, group. a group thing. It was an individual. Yeah. Stuff. So he, I saw that in the in the group I was, my drive was more than everybody's drive. No offense, but you know, so I, I knew I was on assignment. I was not guessing about this thing, you know. So I said, no, let me not slow these guys down. I excused myself, you know. I told them guys, this thing is more than hobby for me. This is an assignment for my life. So and that was how I went and and we we started recording and the first major one that that I recorded was um mm -hmm. uh, Yes, I did it at the convention by you know in the stadium with with, with Love World um, Campus Fellowship. It was amazing and my pastor loved it and. That's how we began. So, which record will you um, describe as your breakthrough record? <laughs> I think it will be on the rock. That was the first one. That that the whole concept of that album was a summation of all my musical journey, rehearsals, uh, being part of other people's recording, finding myself. So, on the rock was really inspired me being inspired by God to put out something that was out of the box. And as soon as he hit ground, pow, it was all over the place. On the rock was in on that album you had Iwani Kong, you had Imarama, you had God Day, you had Adon Hama, you had so many songs that were just like pa, 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 pa. So which which year was that? 2006, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> you spoke about the track, I Don't Hammer. Yeah. Like, is, is that what inspired the name of your label? Hammer House. Yes, it is because, you know, growing up uh, street and all that, in pidgin English, you know, when you say somebody don't hammer, it means yeah. he's successful. Yes. So I, I always wanted to let people re be relatable with my message and the music you know, with the message God had given me. Um, using local parlance once in a while to just really portray what I was saying was always a key at the time. So that's where <laughs> Hammer <laughs> House. You say you're wondering, <laughs> the Hammer means success, in other words. So do you have ads signed to your label? Yes, I do. One of them is my, my lovely wife, uh, Jadel. Mm -hmm. And we're considering a few other, a few other guys you know, then the pipeline. But it's a whole lot of work, working on your brand as an artist and as a music person, and then working on another artist, you know, yeah, it's, it's a whole asking. lot. It's a whole lot. So we're taking our time. We're not rushing. Um, we've had, we've, we, we plan doing singles and singles for some of these guys, and pretty soon we'll be out here. Since you started the journey, have you ever been pressured to go into the secular music, into making secular music? <laughs> Not at all. I've never been pressured because I think God found me early and I He helped me to get a solid foundation about what I was doing. I was never, I've never been pressured like, oh, I wish. I it's like somebody who is alive and wishing he was dead. Sure. It's not, when you when you receive the life of God, unless, unless maybe you're just playing church, but if that life is in you, nothing compares to that life. The joy that that life brings, the satisfaction that that life brings, the fulfillment that that life brings, you can't pass it up for for something inferior. So I've never, and it was, it was not about money. If you hear me say fulfillment, joy, you know, satisfaction, 
money can buy those things, you know. So that's why I've never been, never yeah, been pressured. pressured at all. Okay. So, what's your creative process like? <laughs> it's a whole lot. It's not too many, though. But just being in the zone, being conscious that I'm on assignment, yeah. just knowing that this is not about me, trying to make a name for myself. And once that is in check, you begin to now find words. The right words to express that position begins to come to your spirit, come to your mind. If there's anything you want to talk about, you now start talking from that consciousness that you are not just a human being, you are a God man, you know, so it begins, to, it begins from that awareness and then I have a fantastic team of smart musicians around me you know so i bring an idea and one or two persons begins to say okay why don't we tweak this why don't we tweak this or an idea can even start from one of uh, a member of the team like oh i'm thinking we don't have something like this why don't we do something like this why don't we do i'm very very big on counsel i I don't, I don't, I'm not opinionated. I was, okay, you listen to yes, me. I listen a lot, even to my kids. When I'm creating music, sometimes I just play it and I just get their reaction. Sorry. As young as they are, their reaction is a lot of message for me. Sometimes I just play it out for my staff in the house. I check how they react to the Yeah, message. so it's a, it's a, it's a, a a bit of so many, so many, so many things that comes into decision. Okay, this song should go out. This is ready. Okay, but what's that? Um, the central message you try to put out whenever you put the music. Central message is 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 a relationship with God through Jesus our Lord. Everything we hear to do, he said. He said we should go into the world preach the gospel they need to know what jesus has done sure. it was so important to him that it it was not about saving us alone if it was just about salvation we could have been saved and just teleported to heaven but it was important to jesus that people knew that he had paid the price so he commissioned everyone who believed on him as he go into the world and teach them tell them you know, that sin shall not have dominion over them, that I have, it is finished, you know. So that's the core message, everything about. So when you meet my music, when you encounter my music, you, you experience somebody who's in a relationship that is not just ordinary, you know. So you need those things around my sound, my lyrics, mm. my you must feel that atmosphere, you must feel like, okay, there is a relationship that this person is in and that, that's what, what, what inspires the words, the sound, the message and everything about it. Talking about sound, what will you dis um, describe your style of music as? <laughs> I can describe it as, um, as a, as a, it's a coat of many colors, colors. <laughs> <laughs> because i mean i'm just blessed like that you know there are guys that man if it's not reggae they're not singing yes there are some guys if it's not a slow ballad song they are not singing there are some guys if it's not jumpy jumpy you've lost them they can't even worry they can't they can't do a slow song it's like this is not my area but i just i discovered that i'm able to do all these things i can I can do a slow song, I can do a fast upbeat song, I can do a reggae song, I can I can express myself in in a in a rock sound. And you're wondering, is this is this guy Nigerian or is he so, I understand. so coat of many colors? So, like? Who who will you describe as your greatest uh, musical inspiration? Hmm. <laughs> Funny enough, it's not gospel. <laughs> <laughs> but that would be Michael Bolton. Michael Bolton and, and Brian Adams. Brian Adams. These two guys, like, till today, you know, I heard this, the, when they, 
when they express is very believable. I don't know about their latest um, albums Works. and all that, but those classics that they do have, Michael Bolton, Brian Adams, gets me every time. You know, many years ago, during this early stage, I was trying to find finding What's myself. Up? We always used to go to we go to all night meetings like Friday night and then come back on Saturday. So pretty much Saturday morning you are just sleeping yeah. into twelve noon. And then there's this radio station straight from there's a program on radio straight straight from the heart. Okay. It always comes on around ten or thereabout. That's what wakes me up every Saturday. I can't stop dreaming like <laughs> as long as you're gone. We may as well pretend I've been dreaming. It's not Brian Adams. I think he's smoking awful or somebody like that. But to see the relationship with the the vocal expression, and I'm and I'm you know I'm like wow. It just blesses my heart. Like look at see voice, you know. Sure. So so it's those guys been. So do you play any musical instruments? Oh yes, I play the guitar. I play the guitar. I'm not a Professional, but I, but I can, I can work it. Your last album, Victory. Yeah. Can you give us give us a rundown of the project? Man, Victory is a is is it's a huge blessing because I at some point I was like I need something I need something that really can top all the way. You know, I had all the way. I had good day and. We go the hill was all over, all over for a while. I said I need something that has to match up that song or even do better. So I was I kept thinking, thinking, working, up, thinking. So like I told you, my creative process. I get yeah. you know creative guys, you know. And then I was with this particular producer on the on the day, and we're like, man, I need something that that. <laughs> so we started you. off from a from a particular song that we wanted to remix, and then and this guy's like, okay, okay, I'm, I'm hearing something like this, and I'm like, okay, okay. So when we were done, I said, man, we just made a hit. So I started talking on on Facebook and on Instagram at the time, on Twitter. I'm like, man, this is 2015, right? I'm like. I'm like, Victory is the biggest song no, of Victory 20. is 2018. Yeah, like when I wrote the song. Okay, okay. So I, I wrote that song 2015 into 2016. It was on, until two years later, it picked up in Nigeria. But in the diaspora, man, I was going to some nations like i never been before. Like I was going to <laughs> some of these Eastern African countries like ah, on that song. You know, so 2018, we made it official and then we put in so many classic worship songs and every other song in it. You have a new one now, The Harvest. Hey, yeah. yes, sir. So, the Harvest. What are we harvesting? I mean, we are harvesting many, many good things. You know, I, I, like I told them in the listening party, 2020 was rough for so many people in you know for obvious reasons people were just sure. locked down shut shut down like that except for uh social media and and whatnot everybody was just stationed one place but i heard god when i when i got the opportunity to put the album together i said well, what what do i call this album then i remember that there's a track on this album oh. that's called the harvest i'm like oh so after all the hardship, <laughs> it's, time to it's time to harvest. And it speaks for itself. It's a, such a great album. I'm so excited about it. And most of the tracks came from our live live Recordings. recording in, in 2019. So, so how long did it take you to make the album? I mean, like four years, because like I told you, four years. I'm so it means after victory, you just started working on this. Yeah, you, you walk randomly, you just, you know, you never know, you just keep putting that stuff. Like right now, we I have I have rehearsals tonight, you never know what comes out of there too. So you just keep putting these things out, just keeping them, keeping them. So you, inspiration, you don't want to wait too long on inspirations, you need to record, you need to keep it, keep it down and go to the next one. So, and then sometimes when you allow it to, to like, it's like when you 
there's some particular herbal tea you allow it to sip yeah to stay steep. long yeah my wife calls it steep, steep. so you allow it allow the condiment in the, the tea flavor. to really to really you know when it stays like that you don't just put it and, and just drink no you allow it to sip <laughs> to steep so i believe in allow the thing to create a process to really think through sometimes some ideas that are binding in your head like Wah! after a while you're like ah, ah. <laughs> what was i shouting about oh, on this walk you know so that's why that's why i take my time like that so what do you want fans to expect of the project they should expect to experience god from listening and part you know and watching you know the videos from this project because it came from that place of devotion really really deep 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 devotion there are tracks on that album that gets me to cry you know like i just listen like when i listen to yahweh i'm like oh god Barry, I featured Barry, one of my singers, and she just she just was on fire on that track. And then there's this one, oh I'll bless your name. Oh God. Oh God. You know, so and then there's a rock song on that album also. One or two people never expect that kind of sound anymore, but it's all up in there. So how many tracks does the album have? That's ten of them. And what about collaborations? I think we had just one collaboration. Yeah. <laughs> so what's um what's the message in the album? The message in the album is is is, is the harvest is here. There's a there's a track on, on the album called Ten in One. It means that what took call as ten years, you're gonna get it in mm -hmm. one. So a lot of prophecy, a lot of positive confession a lot of of aligning your thoughts with what god has already done you know so it's a whole buffet you know of different sounds yeah of different sounds and and experience man it's amazing so when should we be expecting it <laughs> <laughs> i think in the, in the next one or two weeks it should be it should be out exclusively on boom play Lately. exclusively before 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 it goes out there so you you might want to just hit your hit boom play and uh, and stream and stream and stream and stream i promise you you'll be you'll be so blessed you'll be so blessed okay so what's that departing words for your fans well stay conscious that you have the life of god in you uh, christianity is not a religion is God alive in a man and it makes a whole lot of difference. I mean, that's why that's why Jesus could walk on water. So stay positive, right? There is nothing you're going through that is a surprise to God. There's nothing you're going through that is a surprise to God. So if you know it, it, it said there's no temptation that has come upon you, but such as is common to man. I mean, that scripture just made sense in 2020. So nobody could escape from Nigeria and run to America and say, ah, COVID is in Nigeria, let's go to America. It was everywhere. Sure. Such as is common to man, for God is faithful. We will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you can handle. So we are bigger than every, step, every temptation that comes our way. Stay strong, go. Don't lose heart. Don't allow depression to finish you. Stay strong. You win. You're a winner. <laughs>